Ever dreamt of jet setting to an exotic destination without breaking the bank? Well, buckle up, because today we're spilling the secrets on turning credit cards into your personal travel magic. Ready to embark on this financial adventure? I'm ready to embark on it. I'm ready. All right, dude. Captain, let's, let's take off. Let's go. Let's, is that a co-pilot reference? That is a co-pilot reference. I like that. We're like that. just punning it all up. Punning it all up. Yeah. Well, well, welcome to Five Friday Feedback. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be recapping what we talked about on Monday's Powder, which was all about basically credit card travel rewards and how I am able to and how you can travel the world for free using credit cards and good financial habits when it comes to your credit cards, of course. Um, so that's what we're going to be getting into. Again, we're going to do a recap of that. We have a beautiful viewer mailbag and we have a little special segment that we haven't done before. We're actually going to be talking through finding the right new travel rewards credit card for Dominic. Yes, sir. So we can figure out what's going to be right for him and that could be right for you as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. And win of the week. And win of the week. Win Can't of the week is always that. fun. Can't forget that. But yeah, the viewer mailbag, I looked over it. It's a doozy. Is it a doozy? It's, it's a doozy. It's always a doozy. Man, people people are really like writing into us with like some crazy situations. Dude, I feel like next week I'm just gonna write in, which should be like I'm just gonna be like, I'm an astronaut. It's just like the most like <laughs> wild thing. It's like I'm on the space station right now and I'm, I'm <laughs> watching the fire guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like this one doesn't see Dom, did you write this? Yeah, this a lot of food in this article too. Yeah, I love Dominic. He is my favorite. He's my favorite. <laughs> Great hair, great, great style. Hair. Uh, <laughs> so let's get right into it. Yeah, we're going to recap what we talked about last week. And if you ever hear anything, you're like, I wonder what they're talking about more in depth. Just listen to Monday's pod. But this is going to be a two-parter because this is just such a large subject. And if we're trying to make the ultimate guide towards travel hacking credit cards, then we better make it two parts at yeah. least. Without making it like three hours long. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, let's, I, I have to preface this because I feel a sneeze coming along and uh, I, and I, I know like you were getting a little like sniffly, right? I don't know what happened if we walked into like a cloud of pollen when we yeah. walked in here, but like, I'm feeling a little, a little, a little stuffy. I don't know. The seasons are changing. And the seasons are changing. It's starting to, starting to get a little, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. So first thing we're going <laughs> to talk about is again, understanding the basics of travel rewards, hacking, credit card hacking, whatever words you want to call it. Yeah. Whenever I think of travel or credit card hacking, I think of people like stealing people's credit cards. So yes. travel rewards, credit card, travel hacking. I just like to put the word travel somewhere in there. Yes. Yeah. Travel hacking. Travel hacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Travel hacking makes sense. Yeah. Um, but what is the definition of travel hacking? Mm -hmm. So travel hacking is using good financial habits, good credit card habits in order to acquire points or miles and that we can use to redeem in order to travel the world for free. Mm -hmm. That's my off the cuff simple, definition. Simple definition. Easy to understand. If you didn't understand that, rewind it. Come rewind it. Again. Do it again. Do it it's again. on you. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. And this isn't for basics. Like this isn't for like someone who's just starting out, right? No. I mean, it, it could be. If you're mm -hmm. on the basic level and you can use credit cards responsibly, you mm -hmm. understand that just because someone offers you $10,000 in credit, that does not mean that I have $10,000 to go and spend as quickly mm -hmm. as I possibly can. Yeah. Unless, of course, I have more than like 10 times more than that, ready to go, ready to deploy and bake into it. Yeah. Um, and when I say basic, I don't mean basic in income. I mean, basic in knowledge. Just want to make that clear. Yeah. Like if you, you can still make a little, like a, have a lower income and have great financial disciplines mm -hmm. and uh, routines mm -hmm. and still credit card hack. Oh, 100%. 100%. And you probably should at that point because yeah. you probably won't have the disposable income to be able to go and travel the world and go on so many vacations. But with travel hacking, that actually allows you to open up that possibility. And you don't need to be spending upwards of fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year in order to take advantage yeah. of these rewards. You only have to spend 3000 in three months. Yeah. You know, so that's only a thousand a month, maybe. Yeah. Some cards are going to be a little bit more, but on average, three to four thousand in three months. Yeah. Most people, that's not all that difficult to do, given that you plan a little bit strategic and you know for these three months, I'm going to use this one card. Yeah. Simple as that. Yep. And every time I bring this up to people, like, and I have, I was recently in Texas and I was telling people, you know, we're going to be going to Bora Bora in Japan and all these things. I was talking about all these trips and they asked, well, how do you afford that? And I told them, well, I do a lot of credit card travel rewards hacking and I told them about the process and I was telling uh, some older folks this and they're like, well, that just sounds like a scam to me and, and yeah. like that sounds unethical or it sounds like you're just trying to cheat somebody. And I told them, well, this is all above board. Yeah. This is, like, it's made by the credit card companies to do all this. I'm not doing anything illegal. No, you know? God, no. And they're like, well, how much does it cost? And I'm like, well, for me to get 100,000 points, it cost me $100, $95 in annual fee and $3,000 in spend. They're like, you see, it costs $3,100 for you to get $1,000. I'm like, well, 
I was already going to spend the three thousand yeah. dollars on normal things. Yeah. So the way I look at it is, I only spend a hundred dollars for a thousand dollars of value, and they're like, I don't like it. So, I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> tisk tisk yeah. tisk. So I always say that I know this sounds like a scam. It doesn't yeah. sound real. Just start. Start with one credit card and just kind of go from there. And we're going to walk you through exactly in this podcast, last podcast, and the next two podcasts, what's the right credit card, what's the best way to redeem, all of these nuances of credit card hacking, because there is a lot in here. And we're going to walk you through that. But it all comes down to using the benefits responsibly for each individual and making sure that we find the right card for the right you. And we start with one credit card and we build up. I now have like 17 credit cards yeah. and I did not start with 17 credit cards. I wouldn't, you wouldn't suggest to start with 17. No. I started with one credit card and I had that one credit card for like two years yeah. and I only used that one credit card and then I was like, oh wait. And I just kept on doing it, kept on doing it. And now I'm opening six or seven credit cards a year, but don't start with there. Start with one credit card a year. Yeah. hundred percent. Start with one credit card right now. One credit card right now. Yeah. And simple. We got, we gave a few websites where you can go to look for that. Yeah, My favorite's Nerd Wallet. You like Nerd Wallet? I love Nerd Wallet. Good. Yeah. I like their ads. I'm a big, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm a big The Points Guy one. Okay. He's it's always been one that um, I've always liked. But there's so many people, so many guys, different guys on YouTube, so many different people you can go and look at. But all you want to do is look at uh, the aggregation of like what's the best credit cards. And I will say sometimes Nerd Wallet and um, The Points Guy aren't perfect. For example, right now, Southwest, the Southwest and Chase card, they're offering the companion pass if you spend $3,000 in the first three months with only one credit card. Or typically, if you go back and listen to our Southwest card, it takes two credit cards, including a business card and a personal, and spending equivalent to like $8,000 in three months in order to get that. They're saying you can actually get it with one credit card. But if you go to the Nerd Wallet or you go to the Points Guy, that credit card for some reason doesn't show up as a credit card that they recommend using. Interesting. Weird. So, the only way you can find that at is by actually like following the five guys. Following the five guys. <laughs> yeah, by listening to us. But so We're the only ones that's going to tell you. Privileged information, basically. Privileged information. Yeah. <laughs> we we, we but, keep it close to the chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very close, very close. Um, but I mean, but also going to Southwest. Yeah. By yeah. Go, going to Southwest credit card and like looking online, looking in multiple places for the best credit cards, not just going to the first place you went and being like, that's my credit card. You yeah. can always look deeper. I've even brought up Travel Freely, which is a thing that I pay for. Travel freely over the years has gotten me, like just recently, my uh, and that's a website. That's a what's a website that you have to pay for mm -hmm. in order to get it, but it tracks all my credit cards and it helps me out. But it also gives me better offers than what are typically offered to the normal person who isn't paying for it. Um, so recently, with my American Express Gold, at the time that I applied for it, the intro offers was sixty thousand points, but. When I signed up through Travel Freely, the intro offer was actually 130,000 points. So really? more than double by having, wow. by paying a subscription to be able to have the best offers. That's a deep one. Yes. I mean, I, I'd say that, that like just that one offer like paid for Travel Freely for the next like 10 years. Dang. That's freaking sweet. Yep. I might have to get in on that. Travel Freely. Okay. All right. But you got to be responsible. You got to be responsible. It's so important that we're, we're good financial habits because I cannot stress this enough. But all the points in the world mm -hmm. are not worth the interest payments on it. No. Maybe that's an exaggeration. All the points in the world, you have a bajillion you can have a lot points of, okay. for like 5% interest. Okay, that makes sense. That's a lot of points. But, but what I am saying is like you can accrue 60,000 points, but if you're paying 25 to 30% interest in order to accrue those points, that's just, that's not good math. You know, that's what I would say is like, that's, this is bad. That's bad it's, math. It's, it's bad, bad habits to get it's, into. Yeah, very dangerous habits to get into, and they'll get you stuck with them forever, never getting out of it. Eh, well, well, I mean, you're gonna I be mean, making minimum payments, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, maybe. but here's the issue. This the issue with that is that yeah, you end up falling into this minimum habit issue. So you're always trying to make the, the minimum payments in order to get out of it. But life doesn't stop happening, so you continue building more. So that minimum is getting bigger and bigger as you're going more and more into debt, and that's how they basically trap you. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to get out of. You know, as I say, like credit cards, credit card debt is a hair on fire situation yeah. because, you know, it, it's guaranteed that it's going to be a 20 to 30% annual, annual percentage yield, annual percentage, yeah. where you, there's no way you're going to be, oh, don't worry. My investments are going to outpace that guaranteed. Uh, I don't nah. think so. I don't think so. I don't no, think so. so. But most people, that's what the way they think. They say like, oh, that one time for that one month, I had like 30%. Like after COVID, I got like amazing 
amazing return. Oh, yeah, yeah I see what so you're saying. Like, yeah. I'm going to take that and say that's what it is all that's the time. That's what it is all the time. That'd be great, but it's not true. Yeah. yeah. So after we figured out the like, yes, travel credit card hacking is right for me. I can use a credit card responsibly just because I'm told I have $10,000 in credit, I'm not going to spend $10,000 like my hair's on fire. Once yeah. you've accepted that, the next thing we have to do is choose the right credit card for you. And we already went over a few different ways you can do that. I like using um, the points guy. You like using Nerd Wallet. Yes, sir. You can just go on Google and search what are the best credit cards right now, go through and find a bunch. But the reason we do this is to research and compare different credit card offers. Because yeah. the way that we accrue a majority of our points um, in order to travel the world freely is by the signing bonus. Yeah. And what the signing bonus is, is you can go and see right now, you can go to NerdWall, you can go to the points guy. You can see every single credit card and every single credit card, what their intro offer is. So an intro offer is saying, Dominic, if you sign up for me, me, I say I'm, I'm the Chase Sapphire preferred. Mm -hmm. If you sign up for me and you get approved and I say, yeah, you can spend me, then I will give you 60,000 points if you spend $3,000 in the first three months. Mm-hmm. If you don't spend those $3,000, you're not getting the 60,000 points. But if you spend those $3,000, you get the points of the $3,000 you spent. Yeah. And I'm giving you 60,000 points. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's, so you're saying, basically saying like, that's where you get most of your value. At. Yep. Yeah. Very, very fast. Instantly. Instantly. You Instantly. Because if you don't do it that way, then it's like, it's you, when you use the credit card, pay for things, that's when you get points back. That's a yeah. lot slower. So think of it like this way. So the Chase Sapphire card right now, you got mm -hmm. one point per dollar spent. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, and that means I have to spend $60,000 to get 60,000 points, mm -hmm. or I can spend $3,000 in three months and get 60,000 points. They're both equivalent. This is one's far easier yeah. to do. I have a question. Go for it. How often do you use your cre your debit card? Never. That's what I was thinking. I've never, no. Nope. You don't ever use it? Nope. Never use, you I, have one. I have one. But you never use it. Nope. Interesting. For like, you may have for like the ATM. Yep. I that's, use it for the ATM. That's, that's about it. I hold it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I'm like, he would never, he wouldn't, he wouldn't miss an opportunity and take advantage of the points. Nope. And uh, the other way I look at it is using credit cards is also safer. It's substantially it safer for me because if there's ever been an issue, and I've had issues before where I've had like fraudulent charges. If you do that on a debit card, you have a fraudulent charge. The money has already exited your bank account. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. You, nothing you can do. You can call the bank and say, this wasn't me. It's like, okay, well, that money's gone. Yeah. With a credit card, and that's happened to me at the American Express when my card got stolen and I saw a charge, I called American Express and said, like, that was not me. They immediately charged it back yeah. and gave me a new, and reissued me a card. I had a new card within two days. Yeah. No issue. And they gave me a digital card in the meantime. Yeah. So, like, nothing happened. Yeah. So, using credit cards, while it may be dangerous, if you are dangerous with credit cards and you're overspending, mm -hmm. Everything that it offers is so much better from a legal standpoint, from a compliance standpoint of staying in, in charge. Yes. It even gives you like better insurance stuff. Yeah. I have credit cards that have built-in rental insurance for my cars. That's nice. Uh, for when I, when I rent cars, built-in insurance for my phone. So if my phone broke, mm. since I'm paying for it with one of my credit cards, it'll actually pay for the replacement of the phone. Mm, that's nice. Yep. Yeah, I think we don't, we really haven't talked about it uh, last podcast in... Oops, sorry about that. Um, the benefit of the rewards, like it's not just the points. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, the 2x spend here, 3x spend there, you know, transfer partners, Centurion lounges, airport lounges, stuff like that. There's also like great rewards, like 10% yep. cash back at McDonald's on certain cards. Like I was just looking at that on the uh, matchrewards.com that yep. you were you were repping last podcast. And it's like, wow, you know, it's like, it's cool that it's like, it's not just black and white. Like there's also a lot of, mini games in here i'm gonna oh. call them to where it's like oh you know it's like um the boys want to go get some pizza tonight it's like oh on this card i get five percent back at pizza hut yep so just bam right yep. there it's like so that. easy there's times like there's been times where I, I like wearing oakley oakley glasses like oakley's are my my dish i don't know why i like them a lot um one time on my capital one or not my capital one on my american express card mm -hmm. They'll give you offers all the time where it's like, hey, if you spend a hundred dollars at Oakley, we'll give you fifty dollars back. That's a pretty good deal. And they just they're just random and they're coming all the time. So you just kind of look through it, just like you said. Like I'm already using the credit card. I already get all of these great features. I got all these benefits from yeah. you know being safer, all these types of things, and I got to travel the world for free. And now just because I happen to look at my phone at the right time, yeah. I can also get fifty percent off on a new pair of Oakleys. Yeah, because the dog might have chewed them up. Last week. Yep. 
Or I might have gone snowboarding with them. Yeah. <laughs> and or just, I hate these songs. Like, Snap! Like, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so there's so many different ways, but the first thing we have to do before we figure out, or like, before we can get into any of this is figure out which credit card is right for you. So yeah. first we have to compare, figure out what's the best offer. Yes. What's the best in, in, in intro offer? Because these intro offers, we can't just like sign up for an intro offer, get the intro offer, cancel the card, sign up for the credit card again, get the intro offer again. Yeah. Gotcha. You can't do that. Some of these credit cards are a lifetime. So you can only get it once in a lifetime. The, the what do you mean? By the that? intro. You can the intro, the intro offer, offer okay. once in a lifetime. Okay. Quick hack, just so you guys know. American Express is the only one that does lifetime. Lifetime only means seven and a half years. Oh, cool. That's an exclusive Five Guy one that only I know. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I like that. That only really means seven and a half years. Okay. But there's other ones like Chase where you can only get it every four years. Mm -hmm. So that's something we have to think about. You know, so say right now the Chase card is only offering 60,000 points. Mm -hmm. But I know for a fact that every year for the past six years, there's been a part of the year that they offer 100,000 points, mm -hmm. which is nearly double. Yeah. Does it make sense for me to take the 60,000 point? Or if I know historically wait in the month of March, they offer 100,000. Let's just wait and see if March is going to offer me more. Mm -hmm. Quick question. This might be a dumb question, but that's what I'm here for. There's no dumb questions. There's no dumb questions. Okay, cool. What is wind? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is gravity? What is gravity? Uh, it's not possible. Say like the Chase Sapphire Premier, right? I got it two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I can't go and apply for the same card, right? No. It's you can it's only you can only have one card, mm -hmm. right? Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Just want to make sure. But you could downgrade that card to mm -hmm. say the Chase Sapphire Freedom or Chase Sapphire Flex, which is a zero annual fee card. So you can downgrade that card. We'll talk about this on next podcast. Like okay. I said, there's so much there's so much to get yeah. into. Um, you can downgrade that card, and then since the Chase one's four years, after two more years, you can reapply for that same card, or you can reapply for the other Sapphire, the Sapphire Premier. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Because like okay. there's two Sapphire cards, right? There's yeah. the Preferred and the Premier. I hate it. I know they're too close. It's so bad. I think it's Preferred. Or it might be Preferred and Reserve. I forget what it is. It's, it's something it's, too close to each other. Yeah. If but, you're getting confused when you look at the website, then you're in the right place. Yes. Then yeah. you're confused. And then me too. Yeah. Um, but you can only have one of those credit cards and get the intro get the intro offer for one of those credit cards. Mm -hmm. Now you could have both of those cards. Mm -hmm. You could have both of them simultaneously, yeah. but you're only going to get the intro offer from the first one. They're not going to give you the intro offer on the second one. Makes sense. Until four years have passed. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So on the next one, I mean, on our next podcast on Monday, we're going to talk about playing this two-player mode. Yes. And how me and my wife are able to just constantly build up points. And it goes even farther. And if you own a business or own a quote-unquote business, and then you can do this. There's like endless amounts of cards you can constantly run. <laughs> okay. All, uh, legal. All, legal. all legal. All legal. All legal. All legal. All above board. board. I'm all not board. not teaching you guys something illegal. No. Um, but yeah, so first we're going to research the card. We're going to figure out you know, which one's right for us based off of the intro offers. Yeah. The next thing we want to see is what are the travel rewards perks that this credit card offers and do they align with me? So say I have a credit card that only can, that all the transfer partners are only for like going to Europe. Mm -hmm. But I don't like going to Europe. I want to go to Asia or I want to go yeah. to the South Pacific only. Yeah. Well, then that credit card, just because the points are better, probably isn't good for me. Yeah. Or if you get a card that's like, it's, it's like a, cash back on going out to eat. Yeah, but, but I, I never go out but to But I never go out to eat. I love to make noodles at home. I've seen people who are like, oh, hey, I got this really, really good Marriott card because it gives me a free night every year. And it's like, okay, do you ever go to Marriott? No. Never been there. Never yeah, been there. Never been. I actually do really like Marriott. Yeah, me too. They're, they're great. I like Marriott because four nights, you get the fifth night free. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Every time? Uh, if you're a silver member, yeah. Hmm. Is that the one where you just like sign up and they're like... No, I think it's one above that, one but above it's really that. easy okay. to get. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good deal. Um, cool. So yeah, you just got to make sure that the travel rewards is something that aligns with you and that mm -hmm. the way you're going to earn points after you hit the minimum spend is also something that makes sense for your life. Yeah. Just like you said there, if I get three times rewards back on going out to eat, but I never go out to eat, then, then it's, a wash. it's probably not worth getting that card no. unless there's some other benefit towards it. But we're always looking at all of the things that the credit card offers us in terms of the points that we're getting at the beginning, the points we can earn in the given year on our normal spend, the types of rewards that it just gives us. There's yeah. some credit cards that will give you free TSA clear, free TSA pre-check. That's nice. Free access to lounges. Mm -hmm. And you have to value that and say like, are these things worth it to me mm -hmm. to make up for the cost of the $100 annual fee? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. I, I can't wait to go in one of those lounges. Next time, if we ever fly together, I'll take you on the lounges. I remember uh, my dad and I, we were in uh, the Terminal 3 or 4 in Sky Harbor, another local airport. And we're like, what is this lounge? Like, we've always seen it. And we're like, 
I was like, dude, this would be so cool. I mean, we walked in there and it was like a paradise. Yep. It was like you walked in like here and there's like a guy with like a chef's hat and they're like serving food and like people were laughing and then like it was just peaceful. And then they saw you like, where, why are you in here? Like, Peasants, go away. <laughs> and then we walked back outside and we're like, ah, back with the normies. And it was just such a nice experience. Yeah, there are some really, really nice lounges out there. Like Sky Harbor is pretty cool because if you even if you walk inside there, you can't even see it because you have to go around corners. Yeah. So like you can basically hide from the world and it's above everyone else. So you can yeah. like look down on. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Interesting. Interesting. I saw, I've seen the one, uh, the Delta one that you were telling me about earlier. But um, yeah, there's so many great lounges. Yeah, oh, there's a bunch wait. of different ones. So there's all just points. Yeah. Just, just perks. Perks uh, of the card. Of the card. In addition to being able to travel the world for free. There's so yes. many different perks. Yes. But first, and then after we identify like the perks and how we're going to get there, we also need to consider the fees. Mm-hmm. that are going to go into that card because some of the fees are as low as $69.99. Some of them are as high as $800. Some of them are even higher. Mm. So we want to make sure we fall on that range as to what's going to make sense for us in our life right mm-hmm. now. And the final thing we want to consider is the interest rate. Yeah. The reason I say it's the final thing we want to consider is because this should be a non-issue. Yeah. Because to our first point, if we're using our credit cards wisely, we should never be accruing interest. Mm-hmm. Ideally, unless, unless life like really happens bad, then thank goodness you have these credit cards to get yourself out of that situation. But that should be the very much the exception to the rule. Yeah. This happens every so often, but yeah, these travel credit cards, since they are premier and they are giving you so much access to so much of the world, they come with a higher interest rate, normally 22 to 30%. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's high. They're super high. Yeah. But again, if we pay off our statement balance in full every month, you have 28 days from the time that you get that statement. If you just pay it off in full, you accrue no interest, your credit score, you continue to build your credit score, you have perfect payment, and it's never been easier with the ability to set up automated payments True. in the app. True. You can go in there and just say, if I forget to do it manually, just take the money on whatever day. Bing, bing, boom. Bing, simple bing, as that. I love that. Yeah, we love automation here. Making it simple. Yeah. Making it simple. We love that. And then after that, we after we accrued our points, we've chosen which credit card, and let's say we hit our minimum spend. The next thing we have to do is figure out how are we going to start to maximize these points and miles. Mm. So now I have 60,000 points. I have 100,000 points. And now you're sitting there like, I have these points. Mm. What do I do, Chris? Yeah. Like, yeah. make magic happen. I want to fly for free. I want to fly for free. <laughs> so at that point, this is where it starts to get a little bit more nuanced. Mm-hmm. So if we're with Chase, if we have money with Capital One, if we have um, our credit cards with American Express, yeah. we have different ecosystems. There's more. There's Discover. There's a bunch of other there's a whole. There's a whole lot. Yeah. There's a bunch. But let's just say there's only three for right now to make it easy. All the points that are in Chase, I can use to book travel through Chase. And I can go through the Chase portal. It's called the Ultimate Rewards portal. And I can book with them. It's yeah. kind of like booking with Experian. Yeah. Same with Capital One. They have their own portal. Same with American Express. They have their own portal that you can book through. And you're going to get better rates than you would if you were just some normal person off the street going to Experian and trying to find things because you're yeah. paying a premier amount. Yeah. And you can also use your points inside there to get additional rewards. Nice. But the way that you can really gamify this and the way that I use travel rewards is uh-huh. I very rarely ever book through the portals. Really? Every so often I will. Okay. Um, but what I typically do is I find transfer partners and I'm able to pool my points across Chase, American Express, Capital One, Discover, mm-hmm. transfer them all into, funnel them all into one place. Mm-hmm. That way I can like really go on huge trips. So a transfer partner would be like Marriott. Mm-hmm. So you would put all your points, send it all to Marriott, and then you would redeem them in Marriott. Yep. Okay. okay. Because remember Marriott, the way they look at it is they don't know where you accrued the points. They think that you accrued them in their ecosystem by staying at their hotels a bunch. Mm-hmm. So do you think that Marriott is going to reward person who happens to have a credit card at Chase or a person who happens to have a credit card at American Express more than somebody who stays at their hotels all the time? Mm-hmm. They're going to want to stay loyal to the person who stays at their hotel, yeah. but they don't know how you accrued the points. So you can transfer all the money in, all your points into them. And then they're like, oh, look at this person. They have 140,000 points with us. They must be a really loyal member. Let's give them a better deal. Yeah. Even though you trans, you literally just transferred them in five seconds before. Interesting. That's a cool, that's a cool hack. Yep. I like Marriott's too. Yeah, me too. I love them. So typically if you're just going to book through the portal, you can say that your points will go at like 1.5. So like every point you have is 1.5 cents. Mm-hmm. But if you're willing to look for transfer partners, yeah. you can bring that up to two to even three cents per point. Hmm. 
Meaning that if you have 60,000 points, rather than it being worth, I don't know, $900, right? It could be worth $1,200, mm. $1,800 with the right transfer partners. Gotcha. So the, it definitely the value of the points changes based on, not changes, but like, you get better value in different places, basically. Yes, and it behooves you to look around and figure out what's best for you mm -hmm. before you go ahead. And I'm going to say that like sometimes this can get very complex. You can be like, I don't know if I'm getting the best value, and I'm sure there's a better way to do it. And you can just sit there with analysis paralysis. But find what is best for you right now, what works for your life right now, and just use the points and go and have go and have fun. Could it be maximized? Probably. Probably. But like that's not what we're about here. We're about moving in the right direction and yeah. traveling the world for free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're going in the right direction. Yep. You know, I, we, I know for me and a lot of people, they focus on optimize, optimize, optimize. It's like at the end of the day, you're not optimizing. You're not even doing any work. Yep. You're not and, doing anything. And that's how I feel. A lot of the times I'll be like, optimize, optimize, optimize. But at the end of the day, like I'm still able, me and my wife are still going to Japan for, and we're staying with two hotels for free. Yeah. And like nice hotels. For nice me. hotels. And it's not like, you know, could I maybe have stayed at a nicer hotel? Mm -hmm. Maybe. But all I know is the way that history did uh, is going to unfold. <laughs> so I'm happy with what I have. And I'm just not going to look at it anymore. I yeah. did it. I'm going to move on to the next thing. Yep. I love that. So that's the best way to do that is I think signing bonuses. But if, if that's if that's too difficult, just saying like that whole thing of just transfer points and all this stuff. Yeah. You can always just do it in the ecosystem. Yeah. Just do it in Chase. Do it in Capital One. Book your travel through American Express. It's easy to do as well, but there's a way to maximize it even further. Oh, that, that, that by transfer. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, I was like, it's like there's no way he has another hack of hacks. There is a way to maximize it further. I lied. So okay, with like okay, here we go. Cap with some of these credit cards, like say Capital One Venture X, you also get a three hundred dollar annual statement credit. Ooh. So you can go ahead and like use your points and pay pay actual cash too, and then you're gonna get three hundred dollars back. Cool. So you can go even beyond that. Some credit cards. Can when does that when does that arrive? Is that like every year? Every year on like December. Every year on your um, renewal date. Damn, I would do it. At, I would do it at like December twenty fifth. That way, it's like oh, a little Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you, there's there's so many different things. Yeah. Like even there's a bunch of different cards that will give you like annual two hundred dollars for hotels and stuff like that. So that's pretty sweet. That plus your points is extra extra yeah. stuff. Extra, extra, read all about it. Yeah, extra, extra, read all about it. But none of this works, right, if you're not managing credit cards responsibly. Yeah, none of this works at all. Yeah. And we've touched upon this at the beginning of the podcast and we've touched upon our last podcast, yeah. but I cannot stress, it stress enough, enough yes, sir. how important it is to have good credit habits yeah. in order to be able to do this stuff. And good credit habits, all that really means is that you have good credit history and that just shows that you are good with dealing with your finances. Your finances are in a good place. I think of it as a report card. That's all that it is. It's a financial report card. Is good credit habits. And good credit habits will be shown through your credit score. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. Having a good credit score here is a huge... It's, pivotal. it's very pivotal yeah. here. Um, because most of these higher tier travel rewards, they don't even look at you unless you have like a 700, 720 and above. Mm -hmm. And the more premier premier credit cards you need at least a 760 to a 780 yeah to, or you're going to get pretty much automatically denied mm -hmm. um so it's very important that we have a good credit scores good good history mm -hmm. and if your credit score isn't there you can actually still get into travel rewards hacking you're going to have to start with smaller tier credit cards and build it up mm -hmm. but my credit score has gone up over 40 points by doing this strategy so opening these credit cards has not hindered my credit score in any way if anything it's only helped me yeah. But that's because I stuck to paying my credit cards in full every month and by sticking to good financial habits because having all these credit cards can certainly still hurt me if I was to start employing bad financial habits. Yeah. Which, of yeah. course, is never the goal at it's any step. Never, ever the goal. Yeah. So you are always paying your credit cards off. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm neurotic. So I, <laughs> I pay off my credit cards in full pretty much every 15th and 30th of the month. But then that's the reason that like my credit utilization for as much credit as I have is like one to 3%. Yeah, it's super low. Super low for as super much as- Super low. For as much credit as I have available to me. Yeah. It's always super low, but that's why my credit score is very, very good all the time. And I'm never having to worry about, am I gonna miss a payment? Mm -hmm. Or is too much money gonna hit a statement mm -hmm. and show that I'm over utilizing my credit cards even though I never even, do that yeah. because I'm crazy. But. And I also have automatic payments in case I miss it because I'm on vacation. It's still going to automatically take it out. Yeah. So I have contingency on top of contingency on top of contingency. Yep. And if all else fails, the internet goes down, you paid a guy to go to the bank specifically. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay, very cool, very cool. Is it? Um, do you have any more tips for paying on time? Anything like no, that? No, I mean just make sure that we're making timely payments and we're paying our statement in full, and that we're being mindful. Just because we have a credit card, I have noticed that a lot of people will start spending more money, even if they don't mean to, even yeah. well-meaning. So I think it's important that we're trying to use mindful techniques every time that we're spending for everything. And with that, I say we get into finding you the right card. I would love that. Let's I get into that. that. So tell me what's going on. So my situation is uh, I have a buddy of mine, good buddy of mine. He's going to be moving out to Arizona here in about three months. Okay. So I still got a little bit of time. Uh, as you know, I just moved out myself. And uh, I'm helping him move. And we're going to be going. We're gonna be, I'm going to be flying out there, you know, meeting the family, hanging out. Um, and we're going to drive back, right? So I'm thinking like maybe – there's a way I can use uh, like travel a travel credit card on this to you know start building up points because eventually I want to start traveling the world mm -hmm. you know at least travel the states at least you know travel to Disneyland Disney World because you know I love Disney things and um, I'm wearing my Star Wars shirts for yeah, you yeah, yeah yeah I love mm -hmm. it I love it and um, yeah no I was just thinking uh, this would also be a good time for me to get a an everyday card mm -hmm. you know so I get points back on my everyday spends you know gas snacks supplies bread flour and sugar all that fun stuff um but yeah that's pretty much where i'm at right now <clears throat> excuse me okay that sounds really good so you're going to be doing this in three months and you're going to help your friend move so first off you're a really good friend i would just make my friend pay for all of it. but <laughs> good for you well uh, and you know it reminds me of uh an ingenious story that you told me about how when you were just starting out uh you would for remember in college mm -hmm. how you had a house mm -hmm. and you'd have your friends pay mm -hmm. and then you would pay the landlord mm -hmm. right so i'm like i'm like i'm trying to get into the chris mindset yeah, yeah. okay i yeah, see yeah, yeah. i see what you're going yeah. for now don't get me wrong he he gonna pay me back for sure he'll he'll a lot pay. yeah a lot hella interest hella interest um, <laughs> um, but yeah okay so next question do you want these do you want to be using the points for this trip when you're moving from wherever they no. are back no no okay. i'm trying to find my bora bora my japan you okay. know so you want to do that later so yeah we'll save the points for later i'm trying to save them up for a bigger trip later. because i know for you you don't spend a lot of money at all so and even hitting like a four thousand minimum spend in four months might be a challenge for you that would actually be kind of difficult in, yeah. in general but your thing your thought process is in three months you're going to be paying for gas paying for snacks yes. as you travel staying yes. for hotels yeah so you're thinking like I could probably use up a thousand to two thousand dollars. Yeah, at right? least a thousand, probably two. In, in this in this traveling. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So what I would say is first off, when you're traveling with your friend, mm -hmm. you pay for everything on yeah. these things and just have your friend pay you back. Yeah. Because you're trying to build up this credit. One hundred percent. So since we're just starting out, the way that I'm thinking about this Talk. is we probably want to stick with a card that has a lower annual fee. Okay. Right. Because. Okay. There's so many ways of going about this, but what I don't want to say is, Dom, we should go with a card. We should go with the Amex Platinum, $700 annual fee, totally worth it. Totally worth it. And then you only have to spend $8,000 in the first three months, and, like, and I just scare you away from it. Yeah. So let's go with a card that a lower annual fee. How do you feel about $95 annual fee? Is that's, 100 bucks solid. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. So call it $100. So I have two credit cards here in front of me that I kind of want to bring up to you to your attention. Okay, I'm listening. Both of them have pretty high interest rates, usually ranging from 20 to 30%. Okay. But again, we're not worrying about that. Yeah. Both these credit cards are also recommended credit score range is 670 to 850. So you want to be in the excellent to good stretch, good good category. Last we, time I checked, I'm around 785. Okay. So I am not spot. worried about that in any way, shape, or form for you then. So we have two credit cards here that I want to talk to you about. The first one is the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Okay. I love this card. I think this is the best all-around credit card. I recommend it to anyone mm -hmm. who's trying to get into travel rewards and trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. The reason I like this card it gives you five dollars or five points per spend for every purchase through the Chase Ultimate Rewards. So whenever you're trying to travel, mm -hmm. if you purchase through the Chase Ultimate Rewards, you get five times points. So every dollar spent is five. Hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, hmm. or five hundred points back. Okay, interesting. Three times on dining, streaming service, and online groceries. That's nice. So I know that you online do like groceries. So I know that you like to like do stuff at Fry's where you go and pick it up. Oh, that's what that's you mean. online groceries. Very cool. The other thing is for dining, since you will be doing a lot of traveling, this could also be a really good way to earn some quick rewards. You're going to be traveling there and eating. Yeah. Out. The other thing is it gets you two times on all of the purchases. So any rental cars you get, any flights, anything like that, do mm -hmm. that. And then one times on everything else because I know you said that it's important for you to be able to have kind of an, a normal everyday spend. You're going to get something for this every time. Okay. Now, the nice thing is this also has a $60,000 point or 60,000 bonus, given that you spend $3,000 in the first three months. Oh, sorry. $4,000 in the first three months. 
Okay. So that means you're going to take a roughly two out yeah. with the trip. Yeah. And you'll have th- two, two thousand and three other months to get done. Gotcha. gotcha. So we'll have to figure that out and see if this is yeah. something worthwhile. Mm-hmm. But that sixty thousand dollars, if you were to just use it through Chase Ultimate Rewards, would be mm-hmm. roughly worth seven hundred or seven hundred and fifty dollars. Because remember, redeeming through the Chase portal does not get you as good rewards. But if you're willing to transfer it out to other places, mm. that sixty thousand could be worth upwards of I would say twelve to eighteen hundred dollars in value. Nice. Yep. That's really nice. So, and another big reasons I like the the card is it's, it really is one of the best credit cards on the market. Okay. Um, actual, actual, excellent travel, excellent dining perks, um, only a ninety five dollar annual fee, mm-hmm. and then it also has fourteen hotel and airline transfer partners. So you have fourteen other people that you can transfer these points to to make it substantially better, better way of redeeming the points. Mm-hmm. So that's I like my that. first recommendation. I, I I took some notes on that. I added it to my my notes section. Okay, that's a really good one. But that you have is, a second. You have I, options. And one thing I want to one offer other. offer with this is sixty thousand points for the Chase Sapphire is pretty much its baseline point value. Mm-hmm. As I said last time in the podcast, every fall is when they start trying to, or is it every spring? Yeah, is when they start trying to entice people to bring in more cards because less spending happens during that time of the year. Mm-hmm. So there is a good chance. Right now we're in March. It's at sixty thousand. There's a good chance that. In the next two weeks or so, they might bump this offer to eighty to a hundred thousand. Yeah. So since you're not going on your trip for another three months, yeah. my recommendation is to wait on this and see if they bump it up because it's not going to go lower than sixty. Yeah. Is in, in from what I know. Yeah. It won't go any lower than sixty, but it could very well go up. And since you can only get this offer every four years, mm. it really behooves you to kind of wait sometimes to get the card when it's a higher bonus offer. Definitely, definitely. Next card I want to talk to you about is the Chase or the Capital One Venture Rewards. Um, venture rewards credit card. The, the names just keep getting longer. They are. They're, they're just getting crazy. longer and longer. They're crazy. But this one also has a $95 annual fee. Credit score is still the same, 670 mm-hmm. to 850, 20 to 30% annual annual percentage yield. This one right now is actually offering 75,000 points or miles for spending $4,000 in the first three months. Pretty good. And then in terms of value, since this one actually goes through their portal, through Capital One, you can transfer it out as well and get a good amount of value. But I would put 75,000 miles at around $1,400 worth of value, fourteen to $1,600 worth of value through Capital One. That's amazing. Another good thing about this one, you get five times miles for every dollar that you book for rental cars or hotels or flights book through the capital one portal yeah so same with chase booking through there mm-hmm. the other nice thing though is you get two dollar or two points for every dollar spent on everything Ooh. so where the sapphire gives you three times on dining streaming services online groceries yeah two times on travel one on everything else this one is two on everything i kind of like that one a little bit better okay because i don't do too much streaming stuff and i don't do too much eating out and online grocery, I don't really do that really either. I usually go into Costco or fries, <laughs> personally. I, I like the 2X a little bit better on this one. Okay. Yeah, and then the, the big things for this one is like, you know, you're going to have the two times miles. And then there's just so many other pros on this one. Another big thing I like about the venture is you will actually receive a $100 application fee for global entry or TSA pre-check. So I know you currently don't have TSA pre-check, no. but they will give you $100, which is the fee. So you can go and get it for free. That's cool. Yeah, and they'll give you they'll give you it back to you, um, and then they have Capital One has fifteen transfer partners. Nice. Mm-hmm. And how many does Chase have? Chase has fourteen, but for Capital One, majority of them are for going to like Europe and like flight or like oh I see air, air, I see. airlines to Europe. Gotcha. Yeah. So Capital One, there most of their transfer partners are airlines. Mm-hmm. For Sapphire, most of theirs for Chase. are for or for Chase. Most of them are for um, hotels and airlines. Okay. So I could see why someone would choose Chase over mm-hmm. the other one. So Very everything depends on you, but there's that. Awesome. I appreciate that. No well, problem. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. I'll have to take a look at that and uh, apply to one of them at least. Yep. The next coming months, I'll be on the lookout for an, a good offer. But um, yeah, thank you. And with that being said, I hate to do this transition. Let's but do it. It is now Five Friday Feedback. Viewer mailbag time. Let's get it. Let's get it. We got a good letter going on for today. Should I sell my house to pay off my $60,000 debt? Ooh, $60,000. Howdy, Five Guys. I wanted to reach out and share a significant dilemma I find myself in. I'm seeking your advice and your guidance on a complex financial decision. As always. The story revolves around my home. A stroke of... A stroke of... A stroke of luck. A stroke of luck. A stroke of luck. A stroke of luck and a pile of debt 
has been weighing heavily on my shoulders. Okay. In 2021, I made what seemed like a brilliant purchase for a home that was $140,000 with a remarkably low 3% interest rate. Where the hell do you buy a home for $140,000? Dude, I don't know. Pack up. We must geo-arbitrage. Man, that's the, the issue about we're living on the West Coast. Yeah, <laughs> we're struggling out here. To add to the fortune, I invested $20,000 into the property, and today it is appraised for an impressive $280,000. Wow. And that appears to be a success story. I mean, I would say so. Oh, yeah. However, however. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. <laughs> the plot takes a turn as I re reveal that I'm currently saddled with a substantial amount of debt, $60,000 in total, and my financial situation is far from comfortable. Despite a dedicated budgeting effort, I find myself living paycheck to paycheck, and my calculations suggest that it would take a painstaking four years to pay off the entirety of my debt under a strict payoff plan. Oh, boy. Now, here's the dilemma. <laughs> Wait, the, the dilemma? The dilemma is just now yeah, starting? It was just okay. now starting. Contemplating a radical solution... I'm considering selling my house. Okay. Okay. The plan is to use the proceeds to wipe out my debt entirely, then temporarily live with a friend while I hunt for a new home or condo. The potential to make a substantial down payment on a new property and the prospect of liberating myself from the shackles of the debt is undeniably appealing. Right, right, rightfully so. I understand. Rightfully so. Yeah, debt sucks. Debt sucks. Uh, yet I grapple with the anxiety of letting go of my current home especially given the viable 3% or enviable. It's also viable. It's viable. It's viable. Yeah, yeah. Viable and enviable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 3% is a whew, chef's kiss. Especially nowadays. <laughs> yes, sir. 3% interest rate and a remarkable appreciation that it's seen since my purchase in 2021. The fear of not replicating such debt in the future looms very large. Very large. Got to fix the habits. This is where I seek your invaluable advice. Invaluable. Should I stick to my current abode, continue navigating my financial challenges, and potentially miss out on the opportunity to eliminate my debt and secure a new home? Or is renting a viable interim solution to ease the transition while maintaining the prospect of a fresh start? The burden of indecision and financial stress has become overwhelming and I genuinely appreciate any insights or advice you can offer. Your perspective is much needed to me as I navigate this pivotal crossroad in my journey. Thank you for taking the time to consider my situation. I eagerly await your wise counsel. I love that. I love that. We're like Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> We're not Yoda. I wish. Uh, from some silly, our viewers are. Yeah. Um, that's a terrible Yoda impression. But <laughs> that's the fight in my home's delight, seeking a solution, pure and bright. Because I'm in the home's glow, that's in tow, exploring a fresh financial flow. Boom. Boom. All righty. Lots to unpack here. Lots to unpack here. Okay, Lots so here. first off, this is where like they become nicer to like actually talk to these people. Yes. Because we don't have all the information. We don't. He has $60,000 in debt. I, I would like to know the interest rate on the type of debt and what kind of debts we're talking about. Yes. Because um, if he's talking like, oh, well, I have these student loans that are $60,000 and I'm paying like mm -hmm. 4% or something like that, like, this, is, this is not this even is the not. question. Yeah. Or if it's like, I just bought a $60,000 car. Yeah. It's weighing on my shoulders. Yeah, it's weighing on my shoulders. But like my interest rate's 3%. Yeah. The, like, it's like, this isn't even a question. But it could be, I have $60,000 in credit card debt. Mm -hmm. And it's at 30%. Yeah. there That's a very different situation. Different. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and like walk through what I'm going to think through and we'll kind of figure it out. So first off, he says that he has come up with a strict debt payment strategy. Have you actually consulted with anyone on this or is this, this just your thing that you made up for yourself? Mm -hmm. Because remember what it all comes down to. Income minus expenses is what you can use as your driver to FI. In this, uh, in this aspect, though, it's not going to be your driver to FI. It's going to be your driver to paying down the debt, which is going to be able to get you to the to yeah. pay money to FI. Yeah. So there's two things we can do here. Can we lower our expenses, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about in a second, mm -hmm. or can we increase our income? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you do for work. Can we take on side hustles? Can we work some more, bring in some extra money in a season of life yep. in order to be able to pay down this debt any sooner? Ask for a raise. Ask for a raise. Move up in the company. I mean, how many how many podcasts have we done on that, on ways to increase your income? Yeah, quite a few. Quite, so a, quite few. a few. So there's so many different ways we can do that. But I just hate when people just focus on like, we are stagnant. Mm -hmm. What my income coming in, it is fixed and I cannot change that. And yeah. what is going out is fixed and I can't change that. We can pull on both levers 
in order to make things better, to have more money left over to throw out this debt so we can take this out in faster than four years. Yeah. So again, I don't know what the debt, what the kind of debt is. So let's just assume it has like, I don't know, a 10 to 15% interest rate. Let's just yeah. kind of put it in the middle. Broad. Yeah, broad. Very broad. So next thing I would say is let's consider debt consolidation because I don't know what kind of credit cards you have. I don't know what it is, but can we consolidate all to like a personal loan? Can we, and then pay off all the credit cards and have it all be in one place? If it is a bunch of credit cards, could we consolidate to a zero APR credit card and have a plan to pay this down aggressively in one year mm -hmm. in order to get that done? There are a lot of different things here that we can look at, but without knowing your situation entirely, I don't know. Um, but when you're asking, the big question you're really asking is, should I sell my house in order to pay off my debt? For that, I'm going to say no. Like, yeah. I'm just going to be pretty pretty blunt there. I don't think that's a good, a good reason. And I'll tell you why. Um, number one is interest rates have risen substantially from when mm -hmm. you purchased the house or, you know, now they're up to seven to 8%. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance you're going to get priced out yeah. of being able to purchase another home. The other reason is that there are other options we can look at with you retaining the home. Yeah. So just look at market trends around your neighborhood. You said that you're willing to sell your house, pay off the debt, and then move in with a friend. Can you keep the house, rent the house and move in with your friend? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Rent. So you're saying rent the house. Can we rent the house out in order to produce additional income? Can we house hack the house? Can we live yeah. in the house and rent out a room or two rooms or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. You're looking at this house as a liability to you, but you can make it into an asset where you're going to start bringing in money off that mm -hmm. and help throw out the debt. Because right now you're living in this house. And I think you're thinking like, this debt is so scary to me. I want this gone no matter what. But what we're going to be re replacing is now sixty thousand dollars. The money that you're currently paying towards your interest would be going towards maybe paying for a higher mortgage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, I like that idea a lot. I mean, you know me, I love renting. Yeah, I love the investing part of it. So that you're just preaching to the choir. Speaking right? your language. Yeah, you're just feeding me candy right now. Yeah, yeah. No, so, I love that idea. I, I would definitely do that. I mean, you could even so say you want to do this. You rent out the house entirely. Rent out the entirety of the house because you could probably make more rent out the entirety mm -hmm. than just a room. Or you find, or you find roommates. Yep. You said he has friends. That's a commodity. That's say, hey, I'm I have, I have extra three extra rooms, two extra rooms. Uh, why don't you guys come live here? Like six hundred bucks a month, five hundred bucks a month. There's the house hacking aspect. Or if you want to, because you said you're willing to move on with your friend for a little bit, move out of the house entirely. Let a family come in, charge them more than you would just your few friends. Mm -hmm. And just start collecting that money in order to pay the mortgage off and be able to pay at your debt. Live with your friend for free for a little while. And then once you pay off the debt, you can either move back into the house or you might decide, hey, I like this rental thing. And you can go rent a house or purchase another house or do whatever you want there. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that you're looking at this, but I think you're only seeing it in black and white. It's yeah. either I get rid of this debt by paying off my house or by, by selling my house or I keep my house and keep this debt forever. Yeah. And like yeah. there, there's so many other ways. And yeah. this is kind of the common theme with most viewer mailbags. People, they think everything is black and white. And I'm yeah. here to say there are shades of gray. Yeah. yeah. So, um, for you don't you, have to deal in absolutes either. No, we are not Sith. <laughs> Only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, I think it's important to take a step back mm -hmm. and take a deep breath. And this is why you're here. This is why I'm here to see the full picture mm -hmm. when someone's kind of, in stress, they're like, ah, they can only see, they're like a racehorse. They can only see a you know, small piece of the picture. But if you zoom out, you know, you can see more of it. You can see, like, oh, you know what? Like four years of, for, I know he talked about his debt plan. I don't know if that's with an advisor or whatnot, but four years goes by quick, mm -hmm. you know, or you can make moves like we're talking about. Yep. And then try to make that go down to three years, two years. I mean, there's so many different ways we can look at it. Um, so uh, next point too, we just said, you might want to consult a financial advisor at this point. Yes. Uh, maybe like a debt consolidator or something like that, a fiduciary advisor, if that's something that you want to go with to figure things out, to figure out what's going to be best for you. Um, but we need to figure that out. Another thing I would do is start trying to project your future earnings mm -hmm. and like see like, okay, right now you're basically saying like it's going to take four years and I'm assuming that you're saying four years without any increases in pay. Yeah. Can or we, decreases. Or decreases. Can we do things to start increasing our pay? Can we start bringing on more work? Can we find another job? Can we do things like that? Another thing I want you to do is we need to start assess, assessing your emotional attachment towards like, how do we get in this situation? How do we get in $60,000 of debt? Because mm -hmm. my biggest fear is that you you do, you decide like, I, I want this debt gone. I'm going to sell the house. It's totally worth it to me. You sell the house, you pay off the $60,000 of debt. 
now that monkey's off your back, you're like, I'm good. I'm living with my buddy. I'm going to put myself into $60,000 of debt again. Yeah. Because that's unfortunately the common theme that I've seen with so many clients working for a number of years yeah. is the moment that that pressure is off because they didn't really like work to earn it. They didn't put in the grind. They just went ahead and like either someone gave them a loan, like mom or dad gave them a loan, or they just sold a house or they did something like that. Yeah. And now they're just like, because I'm a, st I'm a genius because I bought this house at the right time. Yeah. And you're leaving out all of the luck that played into that. Yeah. You don't value paying off that debt as much. So you put yourself right back into it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's, that's probable. Probable. For most people. Mm -hmm. And that's what's scary. Yeah, that's, that's definitely scary. Because if you haven't fixed the habits, then the habit's going to repeat itself. Yeah. And what, what do we always say? Like, if you want to be a millionaire, be the person who is worth worthy of being a millionaire yes that's the best way to be a millionaire 100% right? to, to, to grow that wealth mm -hmm. to grow that wealth so we just need to start creating like a long term financial plan and like actually seeing everything but from what I can see selling the house is a silly is, is I would not do because I'm going to assume you're going to be in the same situation if not worse given that you do that when you have an asset that you can utilize right now in order to throw more money at this debt yeah I mean unless the money you owe is like to the mob mm -hmm. and they say like, we need the money by Tuesday. Well, then, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe. another thing he probably hasn't even thought about if this is credit card debt, like say it's the worst kind of debt, mm -hmm. you have $140,000 or two in, in equity, in equity in the house. Can we just do like a home equity line of credit mm -hmm. where you can have the house as collateral and pay off the debt. And now you, you better start paying that off because now you have collateralized loan where you're going to lose the house. Yeah. So I there's think so many strategies here that yeah. selling the house gets rid of. My favorite strategy, honestly, my favorite strategy, let's say the house is like three bedroom, right? And he's got a mortgage. Getting rid of whatever's in, you have an office, move it into your bedroom. You have a, a gym or whatever in your other room, get rid of it. Putting two people in there for 500 bucks each, that's a thousand extra you can put towards the the debt. Mm -hmm. I think that's my favorite. You get to keep the house, mm -hmm. you get new roommates, uh, and you get to slice at this step maybe it, now it's not four years maybe it's you know maybe it's three years yep you know because that's an extra twelve thousand dollars you can put every year mm -hmm. yeah. yeah there's there's so many different ways you can you can play this i mean he could even make it even better by renting out the entire house for 15 mm -hmm. go live with his friend for six months yeah and then kick that one person out move back into his house like there's yeah. so many different strategies that he is because the biggest thing is he he said that he is willing to sell the house and move in with his friend so that means that he's willing to make sacrifices. So that's what's making me think is he just hasn't thought through these other scenarios. Yeah. He's really thinking, I have to sell the house and there's no other there's no other way. Yeah. And I'm here to say there are so many different ways. Yeah, there's a lot of ways. So you can always reach out to Chris at MonsOnWealth.com, reach out to a local advisor in your area, or just keep on listening to the Five Guys. We're going to keep on trying to work on your money mindset so you can see these things, have a level of detachment from your own situation, mm -hmm. and basically ask yourself, if I was a friend coming to me, with this dilemma, what would I tell them? That's going to be a problem enough just to get you out of the situation enough to think clearly on it. Because yep. right now, I don't think you're thinking very clearly because you're in the situation, you're staring down the barrel of the gun. Of course, you're only focused on the bullet. Mm, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Got to think clearly. Like Chris said, got to think clearly. Um, was there any other tips you have for him? No, I mean, honestly, like big hugs from Arizona. Great job on, on making that purchase of the house. It sounds like it's that's probably going to be your lifeline. And I just don't want to see you get rid of that lifeline. Yeah. It, you get so emotionally attached to a home. You know, I think that's what kind of saddens me. It's like when my parents pass away, they have built such a beautiful garden in the backyard. It's like, I don't want anybody to touch it because people are bad with flowers mm -hmm. and they're just going to kill it. And it's like, this is a stipulation in the contract. You better damn well keep these plants mm -hmm. alive. I swear. I swear. But yeah, that's, um, that's, that's, that's some good advice. Yeah. That's it. So big hugs from Arizona and um, good luck. Yeah. You can always reach out to us through social or Chris at MonsOnWealth.com. We'd be happy to talk with you further. Definitely. With that being said, it is win of the week time. Would you like to go first? I'll go first. My, my win of the week isn't super or anything crazy. So I actually ran last weekend my first Spartan race. Yeah, not anything crazy. Not anything crazy. That's a bucket list. Something stuff. I do. Uh, yeah, I just ran my first Spartan race super. Nice. So it was 10K. 25 obstacles uh, in Fountain Hills. Nice. So my feet still have some pretty good blisties on it. I'm sure. I'm uh, sure. Cause did, did you wear the right shoes? Nope. Stupid me decided I'm going to wear my barefoot shoes because I've been trying to train on wearing barefoot shoes and we're running through. Rocks. I didn't I didn't know it was, we're gonna, it was like trail running. Yeah. So yeah, we're running through rocks and the entire time my feet were just on Ooh. fire. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. I did it to myself. 
Oh yeah, 25 obstacles. Um, I failed at five of them. What were the, like, what was your favorite obstacle? Uh, Is it the spear throw? Or? The spear throw was fun. I missed the spear throw by like an inch because it's like, there's like a wood board and then there's like a piece, a hole yeah. in the wood with hay inside there. Yeah. I hit like an inch of the like outside and hit into the wood because you're throwing like 15 feet. It's, yeah, it's but it was hard. a perfect throw. Like it's a good throw. It's had it hit, it it has, so. it has stunk. And there's no way you can practice for like the obstacles. Though. No, you just I mean, you just show you up there and you just it. do it. You yeah. just go up there. Like, uh, there's there's a few where I got there. I'm like I, I literally don't even know what you want me to do. <laughs> like, and they're like you got to. They can you gotta, this. Gotta do this, and it's like a, this. yeah. So I like a lot of music watching other people do. I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay. Because there's a lot of strategy and stuff, but for me to still be able to do 20 of them out of 25, it's just like cool. right off the bat, just like physicality was going to do it. Yeah. And there was some really like fun like monkey bar. There was this crazy I'm one. I'm terrible at monkey bars. There's this crazy one, right? So you run up. It's like right after you do the rope climb, so you're like yeah. your, your arms are super tired. Like it's between the rope climb and this one's like 100 yards. So okay. Like you're already sore. Like your legs are tired, sore. So you do a monkey bar to monkey bar to monkey bar, just O-rings. So O-ring, O-ring, O-ring. Oh. And then you have to swing. So if you stop motion, then you like, you you're, just, you're, you're done. done. So you have to keep on swinging. Then you have to swing to a pipe and the pipe is held on by two ropes and the pipe shifts upwards. So you have to grab onto the pipe. And I didn't realize it was on rope. So it like jiggles. jiggles. Yeah. And then you have to shimmy up the pipe. Oh my God. And then you have to drop down from the pipe to more O-rings to three more O-rings to get across. That's wild. It was fun. I did that one. I was able to figure that. That's out. good. That's really good. Yeah, it had a cold plunge component. Really? Yeah. You know, there was like it was a it was supposed to be like an ice bucket thing where you like to go underneath underneath a wall in mud. Yeah. In cold water. Yeah. And everyone's like, it's so cold, and I'm like, son, I've been training for this training for months. This. I got this. I got this. That's awesome. So I love that. That's freaking sick. Uh, that's a pretty good win of the week. Yeah, it was fun. So uh, I got my little medal over there. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it earlier when I walked in. It was pretty sick. Um, my win of the week is the Apple Vision Pro came out a little bit ago, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize this, but I was in the mall getting a gift for a friend, and they have at the Apple Store you can try them on. Mm -hmm. You just have to set an appointment because each Apple Vision Pro is specific for your eyes. Oh. So um, not everybody can. So like if I had an Apple Vision Pro, you couldn't use it because it's only for my eyes, which I love because I don't like sharing because I'm an only <laughs> child. And uh, it's it was really cool. So I got to try on the Apple Vision Pro. Definitely the coolest, one of the coolest pieces of tech I've seen in the last decade. Wow. Okay. It was sick. Like you know how like you like get the remote and everything like that. And you're like this is like you look and like you just click with your finger like on your lap and you're just like wherever you look it looks. It's so sick and the clarity is amazing. It's oh, how much does this thing cost? Three grand? Thirty five hundred. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's a little bit, but it's you know a lot of people have been showing it to where it's like you can like watch a movie on a plane and then you like you turn the dial and like now you're in a movie theater or like now you're in like a, a cool place or now you're in a dark room and it's so sick interesting okay cool so we're moving into um ready player one yes, sir. land Indeed. real fast i hope so i hope so <laughs> that's, that's all <laughs> that's, i need that's all i want that's all i want yes awesome. anyway but yeah well, that's my way of the week and that's awesome dude it's pretty fun so this week we're recapping everything that came to credit cards, credit card hacking, credit card travel rewards. So I'm gonna encourage you to please go ahead. Action step of last or Monday was to go ahead and look into travel rewards further. Go to Nerd Wallet. Go to thepointsguy.com. See if this is something right for you. Obviously, just don't listen to us and be like, I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Send we'll it. Send. Yeah. yeah. But listen to us. Do some more research. See if it's right for you. And if this is something that kind of seems good. Try one credit card and just give it a try. See the power that credit card travel rewards can do for you. Because I can only speak from my own experience. It's been amazing for me. We get to go on amazing trips all the time because of this that we would not be able to afford without making huge sacrifices that we're able to do because of travel rewards. So please look into that. On Monday, we're going to continue this conversation because there is so much more nuance we have not got into. And um, we'll see you next Monday. Yeah. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Five Guys. Anything you want to bring up? Uh, no, just remember to tell a friend about the show. That's the fee for our uh, experience here. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Later. Peace. This video podcast is sponsored by Monzon Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor.
It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.